Hi! In this second screencast, I want to show you how you can combine Spring Security with Cloud. So, if we take back our application that we built in the first part here, the first thing I need to do is to add the Spring Security libraries. And I can do that easily by just providing the Spring Security Starter dependency. So, let me add it here, Spring Security. Okay, that will bring in all the needed jars to use Spring Security. And then what I need to do is to add a security config class, like you will do with all Spring Security projects. And to do that, uh, the easiest way to start is to go to the Keycloak documentation. And in this documentation, we have documentation for all the adapters, including the Spring Security one. And here in the doc, you will see a code sample of a security config class. Uh, we can pretty much just copy this sample here and just paste it in our uh, project. So if we go here in this part here, I just paste that. I remove the public identifier here. And um, here, let me go through this class quickly. So here we mentioned it's a, we have some configuration. That's an important one. We want to enable web security. So the first method here, configure global. Here, as the method suggests, we can do some global configuration. We could keep the defaults, by, but in the default configuration, Spring Security will add a prefix to all our roles. So imagine our user has the role user, it will prefix it with role in uppercase underscore user. So we could change that on the Keycloak side, but we can also easily change that in the global config and just tell Spring Security to not add any prefix. How do we do that? So we just get an instance of our Keycloak authentication provider here, and here we can set a pretty, a pretty simple method which is called set granted authority mapper and what we want is a simple authority mapper, okay? Then we just pass this class to our authentication provider and that's it. Then there's one more thing we need to add is uh, where, where the Spring Security Keycloak adapter will look up its configuration. By default, it will be looking for a file called keycloak.json. But here we are dealing with a Spring Boot app and we want to make use of the application.property file. Okay, so we can easily tell the adapter to look in the properties file instead of looking for a keycloak.json file. So let's create a new uh, bin, and here we simply inject a bin which is called keycloak config resolver, and what we do here is we return a keycloak spring boot config resolver. This way we are sure it will lock up its config in the application property. And then, well, we have the configure method, you probably know that from your previous spring security projects. And here, let's just change that to fit our example. So here we are dealing with products and we have the role user in lowercase. So that's all we need to do. And one last thing is if we go to our properties, we don't need any security constraints anymore because it's Spring Security that handles that. Okay, so I just save it and I start again my app. And if I browse to my app, let it bring in here forward. Okay, I go to my products and here I log in with Sibi. Sibi, I log in and you see it's just working. And but this time it's using Spring Security. Okay, so in the third part, we will uh, divide our uh, Spring app into two different apps and we will see how we can secure REST services with Keycloak.
Thank you very much.